Welcome to the vlog. So the very first question that you need to know the answer to is which protocol is used to stop loops in a switched environment? And the answer is spanning tree. This is one of multiple vlogs discussing spanning tree. So spanning tree is a protocol that you run on switches in a layer two environment to stop loops from taking place. Switches will flood broadcast, multicast, and unknown unicast frames out of all ports except the port in which it was received. This can cause major problems in a network and may result in broadcast storms where the entire network is brought down by broadcasts that are replicated throughout the network. So hence, spanning tree is a protocol used on switches to stop loops. In this topology, we've got three switches, switch one, switch two, and switch three. So let's start with switch one. Show spanning tree. Is spanning tree enabled by default on Cisco switches? And the answer is yes. On other vendor switches, such as those from HPE, spanning tree is not enabled by default. So be careful if you're using Cisco switches with other vendor switches. Spanning tree may not be enabled by default, but it is fortunately on Cisco switches. The command show spanning tree shows us firstly that spanning tree is enabled on the switch. It's enabled on VLAN one in this example and we are using rapid per VLAN spanning tree. Even though the output displays rapid STP or RSTP, this is actually rapid per VLAN spanning tree. The priority of the switch is set to one. This is its address, and this switch is currently the root of the spanning tree. All ports on the root switch will be forwarding. The role of the port is set to designated and I'll explain port roles in a separate video. For now, let's concentrate on the state of the port. In GNS3, we only have these two ports connected in our topology. Additional ports are shown here, but we'll ignore those ports. So in GNS3, we can update our topology to state that this switch is the root. We can state that this port is forwarding and this port is forwarding. Once again, the show spanning tree command shows us that this applies to VLAN one. At the moment, that's the only VLAN configured on the switch. So show VLAN as an example shows us that this is the only ethernet VLAN on the switch. These VLANs can be safely ignored because we're not using token ring or FDDI these days. You could also use commands such as show spanning tree and specify a VLAN number and use the option summary to see summary information. So this switch is known as the root bridge or the root switch for VLAN one. The reason the keyword bridge is used is that spanning tree was developed for bridges. Bridges came before switches and hence we talk about a root bridge even though today we're actually talking about a root switch. No ports are blocking. All ports are forwarding on the switch. So what about switch two? Show spanning tree. The switch is also running rapid per VLAN spanning tree. Notice here, however, we have a cost to get to the root. The root switch has a lower priority than the local switch. By default in spanning tree, the priority of a switch is 32768. The root switch is determined in a topology based on two criteria. Firstly, lowest priority. If that's the same on all the switches, then lowest MAC address. Those two combinations make up the bridge ID of a switch. The switch with the lowest bridge ID becomes the root, but it's based on priority first and then MAC address.
So because switch one has a lower priority than the local switch, the local switch is not to the root. If we look at that output on switch one once again, what you'll notice is the root ID and the bridge ID are the same. So the priority is the same and the MAC address is the same for both the root and the local switch. And that's because switch one is the root. So on switch two, the MAC address is different to the MAC address of the root switch. And in this case, so is the priority. Now the priority on switches is by default 32768. The extended system ID is the VLAN number that we're looking at. So this number 32769 is the combination of the default priority of 32768 plus the VLAN number, which is one. So this switch has a priority of 32769. It's not the root. We can see that port one is the root port of the switch. That is the best port to use to get to the root switch. That port is forwarding. Gigabit 01 is known as an alternate port. It's an alternate way to get to the root bridge. That port is blocking. So this port is blocking on switch two. This port is forwarding. And that's what we can see over here. Now we could also use this command, show spanning tree root to see which port is the root port to get back to the root switch. Essentially the root port is the best port on the switch to use to get to the root switch. So gigabit 00 is the best port on switch two to get back to the root switch, which is switch one. What about switch three? So show spanning tree. The switch is not to the root either. Notice the priority and the MAC address are different than the local switch. The cost to get to the root switch is four and the root port is gigabit zero zero. So on switch three, this is the root port, which is forwarding. Now gigabit zero one is also forwarding. It's the designated port in this topology. So the port that's blocking in the topology is gigabit zero one. Now in brief, the way spanning tree determines which ports are blocking is based on the following. We firstly elect the root switch, so that's switch one. All other switches in the topology determine which port is their best port to get to the root bridge. That's known as their root port. The switches learn about each other because BPDUs are sent between the switches. So this port is the root port of switch two, and this port is the root port of switch three. We can see that once again by using the command show spanning tree root. Root port of switch three is gigabit zero zero. On switch two, show spanning tree root once again. Root port is gigabit zero zero. Essentially, the root port is the best port to use to get to the root switch based on various criteria. The first measure is path cost. The path cost is a value allocated to each port and they are added together to get the total path cost to the root bridge. So the path cost is four from switch two to switch one. And the same is true on switch three, path cost is four. Different versions of spanning tree use different path cost values, but that's the cost for a gigabit port on these switches. So once the switches have determined the root port, which is their best port to use to get to the root switch, on a per segment basis, they choose what's called the designated port. The designated port is the best port on that segment to use to get to the root bridge. So on this segment, the best way to get to the root bridge is via this port. On this segment, the best way to get to the root bridge is this port. So that's the designated port on gigabit 01, on the link between switch one and switch three. We can see that once again by using the show spanning tree command. Notice both those ports on the root bridge are designated ports. They're the best ports to use to get to the root bridge. Now on this segment, this port was the designated port. We can see that here, gigabit 01 
on switch 3 is the designated port. And this port is discarding or blocking. Industry term is discarding. Cisco term often used is blocking. And we can see that here in the output. Now the reason why switch 3 was chosen instead of switch 2 to have the designated port is because the MAC address is lower on switch 3 versus switch 2. So switch 2, if you look at the hexadecimal, EA is greater in hexadecimal than 21. So according to the spanning tree calculation, this is the best port to use on the link between switch 3 and switch 2 to get to the root bridge because switch 3 has a lower MAC address. Now in spanning tree, one of the first things you want to do is manipulate how spanning tree chooses root ports and designated ports and the like, but we'll discuss that in a separate vlog. This was a quick introduction to spanning tree, and I showed you how ports were selected in the spanning tree environment and how ports were blocked. The process very briefly is select the root bridge or the root switch based on priority and then MAC address. Every other switch chooses a root port, which is their best port to use to get to the root bridge. Every segment has a designated port, which is the best port on that segment to use to get to the root bridge. All other ports in the topology are set to blocking. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If it's been of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wanna wish you all the very best.